task file, let's scroll down, go to task file. So this is a task file, task six, seven, eight. So all the code actually uh, is provided here. Come to the code. You can see the code, there are three uh, source code. Task file. That UID is an important security mechanism in Unix operating system, as we learned in, during the lecture. When a set UID program runs, it assumes the owner's privileges. For example, if the pro program's owner is a root, then when anyone runs this program, the program gains the root's privileges during this execution. So it's a temporary escalation or privilege. Set UID allows us to do many interesting things since, but it's, uh, it escalates the user's privilege when executed, make, making it quite risky because you can't do anything on the system. Although the behaviors of set UID programs are described by their program logic, not by users. However, users can indeed affect the behaviors of their environment variables. To understand how set UID programs are affected, let's uh, first figure out whether environment variables are inherited by the set UID programs process from the user's process. So the user's process, the parent process, the set UID program process, the child process. So this uh, task is used to verify this inheritance or privileges or, or environment variables from user's process to the set UID program process. We have the following program that uh, can print out all the environment variables in the current process. Here we use this uh, global variable to print out the environment uh, variables. This program, let's see uh, which one is that one. Let's check this one first. So this this one is uh, not the one. This invoke. Okay, this one. Uh, In was two, it looks like this one. Eh? Here you can check it. So this is a this is a program to show up or to print out the environment variables of this uh, program process. So you can download the, the code or you write type by yourself. Both way, okay. I right know. Let's uh, go to our seat labs. I would like to set up a folder for today's lab here, lab zero three. And the code I downloaded in this folder. Every time you can update it or you can download it again. Because I use a git clone. So you can use a git pull to update the contents. Then go to uh, lab 03, find all the code here. Copy it, go back to uh, my lab 03. Paste here. Now we can open a terminal window. I would like to use a terminator. So copy its address or its path. Come here, change directory cd to that folder. 
type areas, you see those three source code files I just uh, copy and paste. The first one is this new so you can uh, give it a name, just create a task file. So then maybe uh, that will be more uh, readable. Step two, compile and uh, run it. But uh, before we run it, we, we make the SAT UID program. We have done this many times. GCC so dash O. Okay, it's a create here. Then we first we change its owner to root. Then we change uh, its mode to set a UID program. Now you use uh, LS to verify its uh, a set a UID program. Check this S bit and check the owner is root. So we succeed these two commands. Complete step two. Step three, in your share, you need to be in a normal user account, not the root account. Use the export command to set the following environment variables. They may have what they exist. Here, path, LG, load library path and any name. This one is defined by the user. So pick whatever name you want. These environment variables are set in the user's share process here. Do you notice it's bin bash? This is uh, the famous popular share. Now run the set UID program from step two in your share. After you Type the name of the program in your share. The share fox the shared process. Pay attention to this uh, procedure. This shared process is forked by the share here, which means by this bin bash. And uh, this shared process holds this install program. And use the shared process to run the program. Or you can say, the chart process is the running program. Please check whether all the environment variables you set in the share process, because the share is the parent, whether it's inherited into this uh, chart process. Describe your observation. If uh, there are surprises to you, describe them. So first uh, we set this uh, Environment variables, we can use echo to show it. The path usually is a, is a set, is what is set. You can see the path environment variables. It's a value, it's a long list of photos. The second one, LD library path. You can also see the two photos here, separate with uh, the column. Now, the last one, because it's uh, created by you, so it's, you will not see it here, right? Any name, you will not see it here. You can choose a name by yourself. Weather, because uh, sunny today. We need to set this variable, right? So set the variable first. You can just use whether equals sunny or set whether equals sunny. Then you can echo this weather. You will see it's a value, sunny. So we have three variables here. Now we run this uh, set UID program to see whether these three environment variables are inherited or passed to this uh, chart process. You know, so, how do you make it a clear one? You can save it in a text file, then try to find the, the three, or you can use that uh, 
grab dash i to find all this stuff, right? Path. What we want to find is this one. So you see this path is inherited or passed into the child process, this set your ID program. Then we check the second one, LD. Library path. Did you notice this one is not a inherited? Then the last one, the one we created. Weather. It's also not inherited. Weather. So now these are the observations. Now we need to uh, describe. If there are surprises to you, describe them. The path is inherited, but this. Uh, the library path is not inherited. And this weather is not inherited. Actually, this weather, why it's not inherited? Because actually we didn't export into our environment. Currently, it's just a share available. So currently, here it's just a share available. It's not an environment available. How to make it a uh, environment we need to export. So, for that weather, we need to export weather because it's sunny. Now it becomes a environment variable. This time, we want to see whether it's passed to the cellular child process. We can check it again. All right? Here, now you see uh, for user defined uh, variables, it does pass into the child process. Here, this path and this uh, LD library path. There are system uh, environment or defined uh, environment variables. And the path is passed, but this uh, LD library path is not. So these are a description about system defined uh, variables. Two of them path and this LD library path. And a user defined. Uh, environment variables, this weather. At the beginning, it's a share variable. Share variable is not inherited by the child process. When we export it into the environment uh, variable space, then it's uh, inherited by the child process. And why LD library path is not inherited? You check the lecture. This is a countermeasure implemented in Ubuntu 16.04. Used to uh, guard any user a fraction or modification or temper on the behavior of those uh, system level important environment variables. So you can check the slides to answer why this LD library is not inherited. Actually, we demonstrate this part, this one, during our lecture. Uh, this is a task file. Now for task six, 
here task six we can check this description because of the share program invoked calling system within a strategy ID program is quite dangerous here we just print out the environment variables we didn't call any other programs and we know system this uh, function is not a safe way to invoke other program we learned uh, during the lecture the safe way is use exec ve and the reason why it's not safe is because the actual behavior of the shell program can be affected by environment variables such as path and the path you see the normal user can manipulate this path environment variables. These environment variables are provided by the user who may be malicious. By changing these uh, variables, malicious users can control the behavior of the satellite program. In batch, you can change the path environment variable in the following way. This example adds the directory home seat to the beginning of the path environment variables. Actually, we can see uh, it here. Home seat pen. What is our home seat? Home seat, uh, here it says you can change it like this. If you want to add this home seat, this pass, as the first uh, pass to search executable programs. Currently, it is only add this one in front of this, uh, the other stuff, which means when you type a program without the full, it's a full pass, it will search this folder first. The set UID program below is supposed to execute this bin ls command. However, the program programmer only uses the relative path for the ls command, you see that the programmer does not supply the full path, the full path, absolute path, which means start from the root path, rather than the absolute path. And please compile the file program and change it to the owner to root, make it a serialized program. Can you let this serialized program run your code instead of this being ls? And uh, if you can, is your code running with the root privilege described and explain your observation. Actually, we demonstrated this one in the first week. If you don't remember, you can check that uh, slice. There is a way how to uh, change the behavior. Let's uh, check this note, what we need to pay attention. The system command function executes this, uh, execute the bin share program first, then ask this share program to run this uh, CMD command. In both version of Ubuntu VMs, bin share is actually a symbolic uh, link pointing to this bin dash share. However, the dash program in these two virtual machines have an important difference the dash share in the newer one has a countermeasure that prevents itself from being executed in the UID process. Basically, if dash detects that it's executed in a set UID process, it immediately changes the effective user ID to the process uh, real user ID, essentially dropping the privilege. The dash program in the old version does not have this uh, behavior. Since our victim program is a satellite program, the counter measure in this uh, bin dash can prevent our attack. To see how our attack works without such a counter measure, we will we, we link this bin share to another share that does not have such a counter measure. Like this, we have installed a share program called Z share. In our new Ubuntu we use the following command to link this uh, bin share to this Z share. There's no need to do this in Ubuntu 12.04. Okay, now where do you 
find the solution to this one. It's in the old slides. You can find from the official website or from the copy we put here. Lectures, module one. I think it's inside this uh, first slice, privilege program. And you can find that uh, attack. Here about the system path environment variables. Capability, okay, uh, you can. Here, you can see there is a. One way we can get a root share with this input. How do you get it? This is a um, safe approach, which means we call that a system function to execute another program. And how do you remove the common measure implemented in Ubuntu 16.04? And see it's here. And the safe way, we use exec v. So you can get the solution from here. The code, uh, I think this is invoke.c. You can use uh, cat invoke.c to see the content. Okay, it's not this one. Let's see whether it's this PTSU. Okay, it's this one. Right, you can check the description here. We just uh, use the system to run this uh, LS command. The source file is a little bit different, it's okay. Now we can uh, follow these steps to do the attack. So we only need to replace this LIS with, uh, with uh, our program by manipulate this uh, path environment variables. So in our lecture, we, s we have another one. This one is a construct input. We want to find uh, the other one, manipulate the path environment variable. So let's see, I think it is here. How do we attack slow manipulating the path environment variable? That is a program when we show a calendar, right? Inside of this uh, demonstration here, this is about the link. Dynamic link, external programs, there's the attack surface, external program. It uh, call a calendar. And uh, this is a malicious uh, program changed to bin dash. So, and this can be manipulated through the, the pass variable. So, which means the idea you need is from here. And now let's uh, first uh, compile this program. Dash. 
compare this uh, program pdsu.c-r pdsu then we change it to a security program sudo so ch um, change the root change the owner to root then we change it its uh, mode to security program We can verify it. PDS here, you see uh, the only is root and uh, it's a Sergio ID program. Uh, when we run it, it will just uh, show LS list the contents inside our current folder. Right? You see it just list out the files in our current folder. Just like you type this LS. You type this LS, you will see this list, but you see something different. These uh, are not highlighted. So it just uh, you call this uh, system function to run this uh, LS as uh, we discussed here. It actually call that uh, it just call another program called that SH. Bin SH first. Now we want to attack it. Could we attack? Actually, let's see whether we can. But currently, uh, it points this uh, bin share, it has a countermeasure. Right? It has a countermeasure. If we, we leave the countermeasure here first to see uh, what we will get if we leave, leave the countermeasure here. Could we construct something like this? So which means we want to construct some attack. PDSU through that import with uh, any file name, just like that. Being shell. To see whether it uh, will create a shell for us. It uh, does not here. So you can check the difference. Why this one worked and this one does not. This one we cannot get uh, a share. Inside this one, this program is uh, because it uses this XXV to run several commands. And so you can supply uh, several commands here. But you see here, data is still treated as data, not code. So this, this attack fails because this one uses a safe way. But the construction, the attack construction is the same. Here, you can check this uh, construction here, cat core. Here you will get a share, get a root share. And the code for that cat core, you can see the reason is here, system command, this whole stuff is uh, put inside this uh, command. So you can open, you can open this bin share to that command list, then it will execute. But here is just an LS, so which means we cannot use this way. Now, as the lab intended for, we can modify this uh, pass variable, so we, we can follow This uh, demonstration here. Okay, oops. Environment available. Did I just close it? We want to manipulate the path. 
So it will be a core a malicious program with the same name as LS. Right? So how do we create that one? We don't want to create it from scratch. So let's check the slides as I just showed you. It's inside this uh, This one to manipulate its uh, pass environment variable. The uh, calendar demonstration. Here. And we modify its pass here. So which means we force the bar program to execute the following program. This program is that uh, calendar, just like here, it just causes LS. So we can create a program like this, malicious uh, LS program, right? So we need to create a malicious program. Sub L, this is a sublime text editor. We create a LS dot C. and type those code inside. Here we, we need some uh, head files. Now, how do you find the head file for that uh, system core here, system? Bin dash. Return zero. How do you find this system? Which head file defines this system call? We can use a manual system. Here you see it's inside this standard lab, this head file. And copy it, have to quit. Oops, it's, a, it's already out. So we put that uh, head file here. I didn't copy that head file. Include standard lab dot edge. You can check it, std lab dot edge. So we have the head file and we have the code, but its name is called ls.c. Go back to our terminal window. ls, we have ls.c here. Now we com compare this one, gcc, LS dot C dash O LS. I see that LS program again real quick. Uh, which part? The actual code. Which we, we, we copy the code from here. And create a LS dot C. Now we compare it to generate uh, LS program. This is the malicious program. Here, our malicious calendar program, actually this one is our malicious LS program. It has the same contents like that. Now, we want to manipulate the path environment variable. How do we ma 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 manipulate that? Here, use this one. Export path equals dot means the current folder. Separate each folder with the columns. The old pass put here. You can verify its result. Echo pass. You see uh,
So where is uh, our current folder is here, dot, right? A dot here. Dot here is a current folder. Now we, we run this, uh, that uh, PTSD, PT, uh, PTSU, this vulnerable program. And this vulnerable program, it will call this LS because it uh, search that LS through this uh, folder list and our folder is uh, at the beginning and we have a LS program here. And based on its uh, source code, here is source code, uh, PTSD source code. Oops, what is our PTSD? F3 code. PTSU.c, uh, it just call the LS because the path of this LS is not given. Then it will search through the list of folders and the current folder, the current here, it will be searched first. So our LS will be executed. Actually, you, you want to make it more obvious. We can change that uh, source code, sub error ls.c, we can change it, we add one more head file to print out something. We need a stdio standard input and output, stdio.h, you can print something, say, uh, my malicious ls program is called, when you have to save it. Then when it's, uh, this program is invoked, this line will be printed out in the console window. So we can compare our malicious program again, ls.c-o-ls. Now we run that P PTSU, PTSU, our malicious uh, LS program is called, and you get a share, a share, right? This share is uh, is provided by our malicious program. Inside our malicious program, here LS dot C, we run this one. This dash is a share with countermeasure integrated. So that's why we didn't get the root privilege. We only get the normal user privilege. If you type ID and see uh, the user with the EU ID does not show up here because it's not a privileged program. Okay, now let's uh, exit this uh, share, we want to get the root privilege for the description. Here, how do we get the root privilege? We need to uh, turn off this countermeasure first, as we demonstrated in the class, in the lecture. So we can do it, sudo remove bin sh. Actually, we don't need to re remove it, just uh, do it, uh, relink it. Bin Z share, this Z share has no countermeasure. Fair already exists, so how could we overwrite that one? Maybe we press uh, L F, that F mean false. It is. You can find the help of that uh, LN, which means create a linker with a LN dash dash help. Then you can find uh, those dash S is symbolic uh, link instead of hard link dash F means force remove the existing destination files. So use this uh, carefully, otherwise your destination is uh, removed. 
Now I have the link, I can verify it. LS bin share. Why I come here again? Because this LS now you see our malicious LS is called again, it does not call that system LS. So we need to exit this one. How do we call that system LS? We need to know what is that system LS. So we can uh, open a new terminal. And this terminal, we don't have that uh, manipulated path. So if you touch which LS, you will find it's uh, where it is, so bin LS. So we come back here. We want to show it with a absolute pass, right? With the absolute pass, then it will call this LS, not the LS inside our current folder. We want to use this one to show the contents here. Okay, inside, inside our current folder, these are malicious LS because it's called without absolute pass. Uh, PDS, yo, this one. Actually, I want to check that uh, bin share, right? I want to check that bin share whether it's uh, linked to this one about Z, Z share. You see, it is. This uh, error means this bin share is linked to this bin Z share. It's linked to this one about share. Now, this time, if we run our P, PDS, yo, The malicious program is called, but we still didn't get that, uh, get a root share. A root share, you, you will see a pound key here. So what's the problem uh, I have here? Why I didn't get the root share? As it says, so this way, we should be able to uh, get the root share. But currently, I didn't get the root share, I still get us. Uh, a normal share. So anyone uh, notice the problem? Our PDSO is a satellite program and with a root as the owner. And uh, the LS, the malicious uh, program, is called and but inside that one we call the dash right inside that one inside that program we call dash again so this is this year now we wonder why that one does not work if we check this uh, slice as we implemented during the class here. Here you will get a pound key. You, this means you get a root share here. But currently I get a dollar. A dollar is not a root share. And uh, the malicious code, it does call this a bin dash. Now I wonder what the, what the problem happened here. You require ID, right? ID we, we still didn't get that EO ID, like zero. I have a lot of stuff here, but I didn't get a root share. My program is also a set UID program. This one, you see that S bit and the root.
And this uh, calendar program is just core uh, is a system. And inside us, we call this system being dash is exactly the same. And uh, just add one more line. My malicious uh, LS program is a uh, core. So any idea why we why we cannot get that root? What's our share is pointed to that uh, being this share? Right? Let's exit this one. And also that uh, SH is a, here you see it's, a, a, it's a overwritten, it's pointed to this this year. If we run this bin this year, you will see uh, we have this year like this, it will show up as VM person as the prompt. We can exit it. If we run this being SH, now you see uh, some difference. If this pin share pointed to this Z share, they should output to the same thing, right? But it does not. So which means the, that a uh, soft link we created with that uh, overwritten method, maybe some problem happened there. So we can follow this one, remove it first. I don't know why, but uh, we may confirm that about later. Remove this pin share. Then we create a new one, so do ls beam this year. So this beam share. Now, if we run beam share, this still we get a, get a dollar, not a VM. So this, this is a little weird. So I think I uh, have a problem here, but we need to check the help of this uh, LM. LM dash dash help, you see how to use it. Target here, the link name is here. So we create a link point to this uh, target and inside this uh, line which means this is the link name and the link name is removed first then it pointed to this uh, target right it pointed to this target and it's a symbolic link there's no problem here so when we run it why we uh, we cannot get the same result. If we run this one directly, we, we get this one. If we run with uh, this uh, through this link, we get this one. And all the stuff we see, uh, you see. So how do we uh, pinpoint the problem? We can 
check that pass to again to see oops uh, make a type of echo pass these are current folder then we check this uh, home folder use local pin use s bin use bin is that possible that a link this year maybe a point to some program else in this uh, list is that possible in the lecture when we demonstrate that uh, cat uh, that a uh, calendar it does work right when we demonstrate this uh, calendar program, it does work in, in the class. But here when I run this uh, PTSD, PTSD, it I only get uh, this uh, dollar sign, it's not a, a UID. So the only difference is here I add a printful. But I don't think that a printful uh, is a problem. Let's uh, have a check. We can comment out that printful. Comment out that print and we do it again. Just compare that LS again. GCC LS dot C dash O LS. Now this time, the LS will not show that uh, malicious uh, line. It only show this uh, dollar sign. We exit for PDSU. We still get this one, type ID, we didn't get that EU ID. So which means that line does not hurt. How about uh, we just call that uh, we know this dash, it has count measure. How about we change this dash to uh, this here? But in the lecture, it does use uh, this dash and it uh, works. And I also confirmed this one in the first week. Let's use that uh, this year. Compare it. If I run LS, my malicious LS, you will see this VM. I type exit, I type PTS, U. I get this VM and with a, a pound key. Then I type ID, you will see your ID, I get the root share. So this uh, dash, it with a counter measure, and that root share we cannot get here. But with uh, we, if we call this uh, one number one directly, then we are able to get this uh, root privilege. So why I didn't get that? I will check check it later, and confirm that. Uh, care one of the program again this malicious uh, program again so if you complete it so far it's, it's already demonstrated it's able to uh, manipulate this program to call your malicious program hello everyone uh, let's uh, continue our lab first let's uh, exit this uh, Task uh, six. 
in task six, we succeeded in getting a root shell, then we can't do anything. Exit, come back to our lab 03, check the description. Good, but before we do that, it's better restore that link, which means we just so do ln dash s. Now we want to point to the dash which has the counter measure from our bin share to this bin dash. So we restore this link, otherwise you will mess up with some other labs. So please remember restore your link. Oops, I still need an F to, over, to overwrite this one. Okay, now go to a task seven, this uh, LD preload environment available and uh, set your ID programs. This one is demonstrated in the class, so we, we want to practice uh, some similar attacks. In this task, we study how set your ID programs deal with some of the environment variables. Several environment variables, including the LD preload, LD library paths, and other LD store influence the behavior of the dynamic loader linker. Uh, dynamic load linker is the part of an operating system that loads from persistent storage to RAM, from your disk to RAM, and links the shared libraries needed by an executable at one time. And in Linux, ld.so, ld-linux.so, or the dynamic load linker, each for different types of binary among the environment variables that affect their behavior. The first one, LD library path and LD preload, are the two that are concerned in this lab. In Linux, LD library path is a column separate set of directories or folders where libraries should be searched for first before the standard set of directories, just like that path, uh, similar to that path, uh, environment available. Here, they search shared libraries. In that path environment, they search uh, executable programs. LD preload specifies a list of additional user specified shared libraries to be loaded before or others. So this uh, new uh, attack surface. In this task, we will only use this uh, LD preload here. First, uh, we will see how these environment variables influence the behavior of dynamic load linker. When run a normal program, please follow these steps. Step one, two, three, four. Okay, let's check it. Step one. Let's build a dynamic link library. Create the following program named mylab.c basically Override the slip function in, in lab C. Actually, it's uh, demonstrated in the class here. You want to do this one? It's uh, here, let's see. Uh, this is this zero one. We come to this, this part. This part attack via libraries here. You can see this uh, similar stuff. That is a slip program in, in front of this, uh, this part attack preload here. You can check that uh, dynamic link here, preload. So actually, it's just uh, a practice about the attacks here. So if you don't remember those steps, come to these slides. It basically uh, overrides the slip function in the lab C. So we write a program. We use sub error. To create this my lab, my lab.c. 
and uh, type the code inside. Include standard IO.h and this function name is called sleep. It has one parameter, s. Now inside here, you can print any statements. For example, I'm not sleeping, I'm a malicious program. Okay, we have this uh, lab. Then we compare that lab here. Pay attention to those uh, command lines. GCC dash F P I C dash G dash C my lab dot C. Then we want to compare it into a shared library dash O lab my lab dot so dot 1.0.1 actually this uh, version number you can choose your own let's just follow this stuff my lib dot uh, o dash lc you use ls dash l actually uh, there is a malicious ls here i need to remove my malicious ls if i type ls i will get this one so i need to remove my malicious ls just remove ls now I use LS, this is the good LS. So you see that um, my label, my lab dot s dot one dot zero dot one. Now set the LD preload environment variable point to our library. Export this LD LD preload before all other libraries. Okay, now it's exported to the environment variables. Then we compare the following program, my program. In the same directory as a biodynamic link library. So we will see whether it's called our sleep or the, the sleep function provided by that uh, C library. So we can do sub L. My pro proctor C and type into these uh, functions into main. Now you see we didn't provide head files. Sleep one, return zero. Since we didn't provide head files, you, you will get some warning when you compare this one. After you have done the bow, please uh, do one design the following condition and observe what happened. First, make a regular program line as a normal user then uh, make it as a set of program line again and uh, modify, manipulate the LD preload to, s to do it again and again to see what happened. But uh, before we can run it, we need to add a head file. Now you need to know the sleep function. Which head file contains the sleep function? You can uh, type the Linux uh, sleep function header file. Then you will find the uh, varieties here. Is it inside this? U uh, N I means Unix. S T D means standard. It's a Unix standard header file. So copy this standard head file, come here, put it here. Oops, I, I, I didn't copy it. Include Yoni STD, Unix STD.h. 
save it. Now we compare it and run it. GCC my program dot c dash o my program. You see it, my program. Run it. It will sleep one second, which means you will see the pause of about one second of the record of my my malicious program. I want to export that one. I, now you see the it actually called our lib my lib as well, right? Run it as a normal user. Then make the set you already provide run run it as a normal user. So we use sudo to change the owner. Change the owner to root. Then we change its mode to set UID program. You can verify it. Here you see my program is a set UID program owned by root. Now this time we run it again. You see the pause for one second, and then, which means. Okay, what's your question? Can you open the code uh, file again? Because I had a typo on the Unis STD and it's not compiling. Uh, I will post uh, these files online later because currently we are almost running out of time. So please uh, take notes when I'm demonstrating and try to understand these steps and where to find the references as I just demonstrated how to find those uh, header file. Okay, this, this one you see, uh, when it's a set UID program, that a preload uh, is invalid, becomes invalid. Now make this as a set UID program, it, it, it is, and export this environment variable again in the root account and run it. So we need to change it to root account. So how do we go to root account? We use sudo, switch user a dash then it will go to a root account but enter you see i become root now become root now inside the root we want to but uh, now it's inside the home folder of root let's see we type ls where this uh, is inside the home folder of root so we need to go back to this uh, lab 03 go to this back lab 03 here Copy it. CD to our lab 03. Now all these files are there here. First, we export the LD preload first. Actually, we can use uh, those LD key to find that export. Oops, uh, those export. Okay, let's just. Uh, uh, come here to see that export. Export LD preload equals lab my lab. Okay, now it's uh, exported, then run it again. My program you see that I am a malicious program if you are root this uh, becomes a uh, valuable again becomes a uh, valid again use a normal user when you run it you see here that preload LD preload is disabled that this line does not show up here Now make this a set UID program, user one program, a uh, set UID user one program. I.e., in another word, the owner is user one, which is another user account. Export this level again in a different user's account, non root user, and run it. So I need to uh, exit the root first because both are uh, normal users, right? Seed is a normal user, but we need to create another user uh, 
uh, user one, which is another user account, and uh, export this uh, environment variable. And again, in a different different user's account and run it. So actually, this is uh, there's only one difference here. By default, set your program. Usually, we use the tool escalate privilege, so the owner is root, but for this step, it's just a normal user. So which means it uh, has only user one's uh, privilege, but user one is a normal user, so it will not have those uh, root privileges. Now let's uh, see how many user we, users we have here. And we need to create a user one. How do we create a user one? So do add user, user one. Give him a password. Let's uh, use D E S. Uh, the same thing. D E E S. D E E S. Full name. Test user one. Just uh, press enter. Got nothing. So yes. Now I have a uh, user one. It says uh, make this uh, program a uh, user one program. So. Uh, Let's first copy uh, my program to my program one, which means this one is a, uh, you see my program one is just owned by C. Now we want to change it to uh, user one. So we use a sudo ch owner, my program one, And the owner, owner is a uh, user one. So user one, my program one. Then change it to a set your ID program, CH mode. You can verify it. My program one. You see it's a set UID program. There is a S bit over there, but the owner is user one. Here user one, now we export this uh, again in a different user's account and uh, run it here different. What does this different mean? It means different or other than different from this user one. I'm, I'm seed, I'm seed certainly I'm different from that one. Right? So we run it again, pro, my program one. You see, uh, it just uh, paused one second, which means that one, that preload is not uh, valid or is it disabled. Actually, we can verify that uh, LD preload, you see it's still here inside the CDS environment variable. So now you see if it's a normal user's set UID program, this one LD preload is also disabled or invalidated. So these are our observation. Here you, it says you should be able to observe different behaviors in the scenarios described above. Even though you are running the same program, you need to figure out what causes the difference. Environment variables play a role here. Please design a program or uh, experiment to figure out the main causes and explain why the behaviors in step two, here in this step two, are different. The child process may not inherit the LD environment variable. So when you are inside a child process, you can always use this echo LD preload to see whether it's inherited or not. Okay, this is a uh, Task seven. 
Now let's go to task eight. The two ways, a safe way and a insecure way or unsafe way to invoking external programs. System XV can both be used to run new programs. System is quite dangerous if used in privileged programs, such as security programs, as we just demonstrated. We have seen how the past environment variable affect the behavior of system because the variable affects how the shell works. XV does not have the problem because it does not invoke shell. Invoking shell has another dangerous consequence, and this time, it has nothing to do with the environment variables. Let's uh, look at the following scenario. Bob works for an uh, auditing agency and he needs to investigate a company for a suspected fraud. For the investigation purpose, Bob needs to be able to read all the files in the company's Unix system. On the other hand, the pro to protect the integrity of the system, Bob should not be able to modify any file. To achieve this goal, when uh, super-user of the system wrote a special security program here and then gave the executable permission to Bob, this program requires Bob to type a file name at the command line. Then it will run this bin cat to display the specified file. Actually, we see this one, similar one in the first week, right? the second week. Uh, since the program is running as a root, it can uh, display any file Bob specified. However, since the program has no right operation, Wins is very sure that Bob cannot use this special program to modify any file. Let's see whether there are some vulnerability can be exploited. Here, this file uh, use system to call the command, and here is a command. You see, a command is being cat. This argument one is a file name. Actually, this one we have seen it in our second week. Here, the program is uh, provided here. Code this uh, in invoke dot c. Here you see, you see the being cat. Right, we have this system command or execute two ways use only one of the followings. Here use only one of the followings, exactly the same. First compile this one, make the strategy program we are using system to invoke the command. If you were Bob, you can you compromise the integrity of the system? For example, can you remove a file? that's not right to you. Then step two, uh, comment out this command again, uh, comment out system command again, and comment this one, which means we use the safe way to invoke a program. Then see whether we can uh, do those attacks again. Please describe and explain your observations. So how do we design this program? First, we just compile this program, make the uh, root on the set UID program, then run it. How do you attack? You can use exactly the method specified in that slide. Let's uh, first to do it. GCC invoke dash o invoke. So we have a invoke, then we change the owner to root. So do search owner, root, invoke, change it to a set UID program, search mode, for 755, invoke, verify this one. You see it's a set UID program owned by root. If we run it normally, Invoke, we need to provide a file name. For example, we want to uh, find the etc shadow, right? And see it says permission denied. It, it cannot be used to cut that one. And uh, it says, as the program designed, it should be able to use to, uh, 
to here you see this being cat it should be able to uh, cat any protected files so why we cannot do that invoke if we can uh, use a readable file for example password this should be readable by all the users you can see uh, the contents uh, user one we created okay now you see the purpose is not uh, implemented so why this one we cannot uh, access those uh, secure files as it says here the intention which means it must be able to read any specified files since uh, it is run as a root anyone notice the problem actually as we discussed before it's because this is a system it will call that a dash instead of z here so that's why we cannot uh, view it so we can use sudo link ls to link to the target in z here this uh, insecure version being share we use uh, f now this one is pointed to an inse insecure share we want to invoke this shadow file again now this time you see uh, this shadow file we are able to uh, read its secret contents because that dash has, has common measures and uh, make this uh, system in safe way disabled now if you will bob can you compromise the integrity of the system actually this time we can use the technique we provided in the slides which means we can add a code here for example we want just run bin dash let's see if bin dash worked or not right this one is demonstrated in those slides actually here are two commands they are the data and the commands they are mixed together into this uh, command it's available if we run it we see we get a shell but it's not a root shell right we get a shell here we can type id you see it's not a root shell we exit if we use that uh, Z shell, then you get a root shell. Since you get the root shell, you add equal zero. Certainly, you can uh, modify any files because we want to get the, the root shell. So you can do anything, not only compromise the integrity of the system, you can destroy the system. Certainly, you can remove any files. That's not not a right for you because you want to get the root share. Now, the exit. We want to demonstrate the safe way. Exit we to see whether we still be able to attack like this. So go to the source code. Actually, uh, I want to. Okay, we we change it. In the, let's uh, compile it first we need to change the program invoke we uncomment this uh, safe way to call another program and comment out this dangerous uh, method control s save it then we compile this uh, modified program gcc invoke dot c dash o give it a good name safe invoke safe invoke here it says implicit uh, uh, declaration which means it we don't have that head file how do we find the head file 
copy this function name, use the same way we demonstrated before. Here, put this uh, x equal v. Oops. Exec we function head file. You will see it's, uh, what is the head file. It's a head file is this uni std dot h. So you need to add that head file. You see the head file does not include here. Include uni std dot h. And let's save it. Now come back to compile it. We should uh, get rid of this warning. That one in disappeared. Okay, now we want to run this safe invoke. Safe invoke. Since uh, our shell is still linked to that vulnerable one, let's see whether we can uh, etc to read that uh, shadow. You see, Prometheus and deny now in the, the with the safe way we cannot do it. We can use that invoke etc to do a comparison. Shadow uses that invoke is good. But uh, actually, we, we, we missed one step. We didn't change this safe invoke to a set UID program. I mean, sudo change the owner, root, safe invoke, sudo change mode, 4755, safe invoke. Then we do it again with this uh, safe invoke to see whether we can access this uh, secret file. You see, uh, we are able to access this uh, secret file and this is uh, as designed, right? This is as uh, intended for, but uh, can we attack or delete other files? So we can uh, use the attacks we just demonstrated. So we use that uh, in Z shell, right? We use this uh, technique. It says no uh, such file or directory. Did you notice the problem? Here, they are all explained as data, so it cannot find. But in that system, after that uh, semicolon, the first part explained as data, the second part explained as command. But with this exec ve, they are only explained as data here, or explained, explained as only file name. So it's not uh, treated as a command like a system call. So this is a safe way, you see now, we cannot uh, uh, get root share, like uh, we attack this system. After your lab, always, uh, always recover that linker. So do link dash sf bin dash bin shell, restore this link to this uh, safe one, otherwise you will mess up with your later uh, labs. So restore to this safe one, both uh, methods will not work as we just uh, went through. Okay, that's it.